is to give Justin Bieber some tips to use when he inevitably ends up in prison. The first thing you'll need is a shank. I made mine out of a pintail comb and a pack of gum. <laughs> I found Bubblicious works best, and it's so much fun to say. Today we're out in the shop, and I thought I would show you how to make a, a real quick and easy whirly gig that young kids can make, and it can help you make or make themselves, bring it to school. Uh, when my kids were very young, the elementary school had a project called Market Day, and the kids would make things themselves and bring them in to sell or trade for other items that the other kids had made. And these little whirly gigs I had to make out of uh, scrap wood. I have uh, the scrap box that I keep under the table here and pick out a couple pieces of scrap wood like this. This is a, you know, this is about three quarters square. Get a couple of these. Maybe some of this, this is one by pine, just to get at the hardware store or Lowe's. I want to stick to just shop tools that the average household Everyone has them out in the garage or down in the basement. No power tools except uh, you have an electric drill, a hot glue gun. But I think I got these at the dollar store or maybe um, Michael's. But it, these are just big old tongue depressors. They call them, I think they call them craft sticks or paint stirrers or whatever. You can use anything, but just a regular a tongue depressor. You can get these in in packs and boxes. They're thin, they make good propeller blades for a small whirly gig. Plywood, you can use plywoods on these. Uh, you can also, instead of a glue gun, you can use just wood glue. And then you'll need a saw, a regular old saw. We're gonna need a base. So a base for, hold it up. And then we'll need the, uh, the tower support round. This is an old, just a piece of uh, round dowel. So we're going to need a base, a support, and then this one will pivot into the wind when you turn a fan or you take it out in the wind. So you'll need the cross piece here, and then you're going to need a hub. When I'm making a whirly gig to sit outside, I almost always use a, a hub cut on the table saw. Well, we're not going to use a table saw. You really don't want young kids around in any kind of a power tool like that. Anyway, we're just going to make the easiest hub we can with a saw. And the saw makes a pretty thin uh, kerf in the wood. So I'm hoping that this saw, I don't know, haven't used it much, but I think that with the glue, this will fit right in. The hardest step uh, probably is to make the hub. If you don't have a vise on your workbench, all you really need is a little clamp. But you just take, take the piece of wood that you want to cut and just clamp it right to the, right to the workbench. And w when you're cutting uh, with a handsaw, it's very difficult, without having someone to hold the piece for you, it's very difficult to get a nice straight cut. This isn't real critical either, but Let's make the hub like two inches, two inches square, okay? So two inches, I'm gonna mark, always mark a line when you're cutting, even when you're cutting with a saw. You mark a line, it gives you, gives your eye something to follow while you're sawing. I'm using the square just to get these lines nice and straight. So that'll be the hub, two inches square. See the hub? Okay, that's gonna be the hub. So let's cut that. I cut the outside piece first, and then cut the inside piece. There's the hub. That's it. Super easy. And now, the next thing to do on this hub is to drill a center on it. Before I do any more cutting on it, I want a center. So the easiest way to get a center 
of a square. Line up with, the, with this, any straight edge that you have. I'm going to use one of these tongue depressors because they're pretty straight. Line up the edges and make mark it in the middle, edge to edge, and then turn it 90 degrees and mark this edge to edge. You see that? There's your center. Now we have to cut the slot here for the blades. And we're going to need four of them. And we want them all to go in the same direction. So let's mark those off. Now any uh, carpenter square like this has a 45 angle built into it. These don't have to be 45, but 45 is easy because every square has that built in. So you see this angle right here on the handle, or I guess that's the handle if you want to call it that. That's 45 degrees right there. So we want to, we want to mark these pretty much in the center of this surface, of each surface. We want to mark these. So let's uh, measure these. This is the hardest part of the build, It's getting the hub. The hub's critical. Any propeller. It doesn't have to be a four blade, you know, depending on how accurate you're, you want to, how much you want to saw, you could do, a, you could do a, a two blade, you could do three blade, make it round, whatever you're in the mood for. So there's my, there's my center lines. So now I'm going to mark off 45 degrees on this. Again, uh, if I had a vise, I would use the vise. Mark them all in the same direction. Okay, that's what it should look like when you're done. They're all marked. If you have a vise, that would be the easiest way. Uh, all I have is this big one here, but the same thing. And just clamp it using this clamp I'll clamp it to the table I keep wanting to say Jed clamp it Uncle Jed so that'll hold it good enough I want to make sure I get it right on that line So I want to be careful not to go so deep that I go through the center hole right here. So I'm just going down, you know, enough to hold one of the uh, popsicle sticks, to hold one of the tongue depressors. Just deep. Turn it over 90 degrees and repeat. Now I found that I have this little Dremel or uh, Zacto and if you have one of these it helps because this is so small. Okay, now, same thing, I'm going to loosen it here, rotate it 90 degrees. Get a good view of my little clamp set up there without having a, a vise. Now, by all means, if you have a vise, use it. It makes this a lot easier. So now I have to drill the center hole. So the important thing on this center hole is to get it, uh, you know, I don't want it crooked, I want it to be straight in. So 
without a drill press, I would normally on my whirly gigs that I make, I use a drill press, get it very accurate. Uh, now, and the size of the drill, now uh, I'm going to use 1 8 inch because uh, 1 8 inch drill bit, everybody has them, they're pretty common, it's not too big, not too small. Whatever you're going to use for your propeller axle, these type of whirly gigs, I usually just use a small nail, right? Quick and easy. You can use a screw. But, you know, then you got to screw it in and you have to have another tool, screwdriver. Screw's fine. If that's all you have, use a screw. But I usually just use a, a like a medium-sized nail with a head on it. And we'll use a nail again uh, for the pivot. So I'm going to use a 1 8 inch drill bit. I've got a hand-tightening chuck here on the uh, electric drill. So it's just important to get this really... Uh, straight here you know make sure eyeball it as you go in make sure you have it really straight not too bad That's, uh, that must be the dullest 1 8 inch drill bit in the history of man because it's crazy Anyway, that's, that's the major hard part of this whole build, is the hub. So that, I'm going to call that hub finish for now. We'll probably do a little sanding on it uh, in a little while. And then we'll uh, pick out some colors and paint it with some, uh, some of these craft paints. Uh, folk art craft paints are really good. Whatever you have. The, I think these are 50 cents uh, for a whole bottle at Walmart. Now if you go to... Uh, some of the craft stores like Michaels or whatever, these are going to be like two sixty nine a piece. But go to Walmart. I think they're fifty cents a piece. Sometimes they have them on sale, so that's when I pick them up. I think I'm going to use this piece for the base. I'll cut it in half, and uh, that'll be the base. And then now I'm going to build the 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 base here. The yeah, the stand. Now this can be square or it can be round. If you know if it's round, if, if you have a big drill bit, if you have a half inch drill bit, and you have a half inch uh, dowel here, you can just drill a drill a hole in your base and you know glue it in there, hammer it in tight, and you're good to go. Let's do that. That's easy. I like that. So I have uh, most standard drill bits. Uh, boxes have a half inch drill bit. The only problem is a, a half inch drill bit, a standard half inch drill bit won't fit in a hand drill usually. Usually you have to have a 3 8. So this, this is a reduced shank half inch. If you go get a half inch drill bit or you have one of these, make sure it's a reduced shank so it'll fit in a hand drill. And again, you don't have to do it this way. You can just drill an eighth inch drill up from the bottom. I'll do one of those too, but just drill a hole up from the bottom and nail it in. But since this is quick and easy, I'll do it this way. Now, I don't want to go all the way through on this. I'm just going to eyeball the center here. Huh, look at that. This is a wonderful drill by Black & Decker. Uh, I would never buy one of these again, ever. It uh, the self-tightening, the hand-tightening uh, chuck does not hand-tighten. I'm constantly hitting the reverse button while I'm trying to use it, and it goes into reverse when I don't want it to. Of course, I'm left-handed, but uh, yes, this, this chuck has a tendency to stick. It sticks really bad at certain positions, like there's metal in there or something. Anyway, I cannot recommend that piece of junk. So here's, here's our uh, support base, and I think that's a little high. I like, you know, that's way too high, it'll tip over too much. So I'm going to cut this off, and for cutting this, uh, I just love my little X-Acto. This thing is probably 30 years old. 
So I'm just going to use this piece of wood to hold this dowel while I cut it. It's kind of like a self clamp here. See how tight that holds it? That's great. So I'll just cut this off, and I, I don't know how, how tall to make this. Let's make it. Let's make it uh, seven inches. I love seven inches. Seven is a good luck number, right? The best ones, I usually pick up a three foot section of these dowels for like a dollar twenty nine or something. So here's here's the base. Done. Okay, easy. So now the next step is I want to have a pivot and I'm going to go with a little piece of uh, wood here. This is Oh, whatever it is, half inch by three quarter, something like that. It's a little bit long. I just, I just want it to stick out a little bit here in the front and a little bit in the back. So let's make that. Let's make that eight inches long. So, I need to drill a 1 8 inch hole. Again, I want this to be straight down. Okay, to correspond with that hole, I'm going to need a, a hole in the, in the cross piece here. And we'll make that, oh, let's say, Two and a half inches back. Two and a half inches. You can use you can use just about any kind of nail. But I, I like this type with the uh, little head on it, and it's a skinny little nail. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's inch, inch and a half inch and a half, two inches, and so you just drop it in there, put it in here like that. Now, I probably could, yeah, we'll use that one. And then, I, I'm going to need another hole right here in the, uh, in the center of the short piece. So this is the short piece, will be the front. what's going to hold the hub. Let's go like that. Now I have one more slot to drill. Here's where we are so far. We want this to turn into the wind, so I'm going to saw a slit back here. A thin slit and put a piece of cardboard. Uh, I'll cut this. You can use a piece of wood. Then, if you have a thin piece of wood, you can use your imagination. But you want to cut this slit the same angle as the nail here. This way. You see there. You don't want to cut it. it wouldn't be any good this way. Use my little clamp trick here. Straight up and down with this saw. Now I'll follow it up with this one.
just draw a design. You know, this can be a circle if you want to make a circle for the tail. Or you can use a piece of tape, you know, to cut to trace a circle. This is plastic pipe. Cut that out for a circle. An arrow, something like this. Mark the center between this arrow is two inches, so we can come to a point. For the back of the arrow, I'll make it curved. See, I'm just using what I have available here. Okay. Just cut these out, and we'll try them and see which one we can eat. Looks good. Let's see which one looks better. Five and three eighths. Eutimus. Go ahead and cut this off. That's how that looks. The circle. I kind of like the circle. I mean, you could make that circle a lot bigger if you wanted to. You could put anything you wanted in there. You know, use your imagination. And now we have to do the propeller. So my favorite part, I've got these craft sticks. We need four. They fit so nice, you hardly need any glue. These, I don't know, these seem a little longer than than what I'm used to. I have to cut these off a little bit. Let's see what happens. Yeah, they're a little bit, those are a little, a little long. These are so thin, pretty sure you can just cut them with sharp scissors. Your axle nail. Leave that loose for right now. Get it. Make sure it's going to work. Put the tail on. And I probably want to put a bead or a washer in here to give it a little more ease of spinning. But just for fun. That. that works pretty good. Now you can paint this up any color you want. You can make a three bladed. You can make the round hubs. Use your imagination. You know these blades don't have to be popsicle sticks. You could probably use cardboard. That's it. From then on, prison was easier than making blueberry scones.